this past week marked the ultimate launch of the SpaceX Starship in its current form, and it would be difficult to envision a more flawless conclusion to Starbase's inaugural chapter. The most significant development of the day is actually what lies ahead in the future. However, let's first examine Flight 11, which represented the closest approach to flawlessness that any Starship test has delivered to date. This entire achievement starts with a previously utilized Super Heavy booster. This is the identical rocket that we witnessed launching during Flight 8 back in March 2025. The booster was transported back to the Staractory for maintenance and restoration work, which involved swapping out several of the engines. Yet we still retain 24 of the original Raptors from Flight 8 for their return on Flight 11. Their performance was exceptional. At this point, everyone understands what a triumphant Starship launch entails, and this mission was consistent with expectations. A spectacular climb into a pristine blue evening atmosphere was followed by a hot stage separation and the booster's journey back to the surface. During this particular flight, SpaceX introduced a fresh experiment for their booster landing sequence. Similar to the two preceding flights, this mission would not involve a tower capture. Rather, they brought the rocket down above the ocean. This approach provides them with the liberty to experiment with innovative techniques without concerns about potential ramifications. Therefore, Rather than executing the standard protocol where they initiate the landing with 13 engines before reducing to 3, they opted to transition from 13 to 5 and subsequently to 3 engines at the final moment of touchdown. SpaceX indicates that this serves as a trial run for the updated procedure intended for the upcoming Booster V3. It essentially consumes slightly less fuel during the landing sequence, thereby leaving additional fuel available for the initial liftoff. Simultaneously, in the vacuum of space, the Starship progressed flawlessly along its suborbital trajectory spanning the globe. The primary objective here is simply ensuring that the ship maintains control throughout the duration and avoids any catastrophic failures. Consequently, not only did Starship preserve control during its coasting segment, it also delivered a remarkable demonstration of the capabilities of those wing flaps when they managed to survive re-entry without melting away. At approximately T plus 58 minutes into the mission, and at an elevation of 50 kilometers, Starship initiated its first scheduled dynamic banking maneuver. This essentially represents their inaugural attempt at altering trajectory during flight. Rather than allowing the ship to descend naturally along a straight arc, they guided it through a semicircular path as it dropped. This represents a crucial test for upcoming landing attempts when the ship must return to its original launch location. It requires gradual steering from Mexico towards Starbase, Texas. Subsequently, just above ground level, the ship must execute a final rotational maneuver to align itself with the tower and capture arms. We observed the ship practicing this rotation at T plus one hour and five minutes. It rotated itself approximately 180 degrees before executing the final downward flip and activating its engines for the landing sequence. Despite all of that maneuvering and directional changes, the ship remarkably still succeeded in landing precisely on target adjacent to the floating buoy camera. We witnessed it splash down gently before tilting over and detonating. This marks the final time that a Starship launch will ever appear in this fashion. Flight 12 represents the beginning of a new chapter. This means that everything from the ship to the booster to the launch pad will be entirely different during the next mission. The upcoming iteration of the Super Heavy Booster will introduce a completely new appearance and substantially more power to the equation. Beginning at the foundation of the new Super Heavy, it will continue to feature 33 engines, but these will be the Raptor V3. Naturally, the new engines deliver enhanced power, with an increase from 230 tons of thrust to 280 tons. More significantly, however, we're receiving a far more streamlined engine design from Raptor 3 with this substantial reduction in visible components. Essentially, every hose and wire from V2 has been incorporated inside the engine housing. This not only simplifies construction, but it will also enhance reliability during flight because there are fewer components exposed throughout launch and re-entry. SpaceX confirms that the Raptor 3 testing phase has now concluded and the first flight-ready engines are emerging from the production line at this very moment. Progressing up the booster, the overall length will be extended somewhat to accommodate enlarged fuel tanks to supply those new engines. This new fuel system incorporates this enormous transfer tube that enables liquid methane to flow downward from the booster's top to the engine bay. For perspective here, that new transfer tube alone measures approximately the size of a Falcon 9 booster, a rocket contained within a rocket. The top of the new Super Heavy is where things become particularly fascinating. 
The first modification you'll likely observe is that we've reduced from four grid fins down to three. They've repositioned the remaining fins into this T-shaped configuration. It appears their primary motivation for this change was to integrate the catch pin for the chopstick arms into the fin structure itself. To achieve that, each grid fin has been reinforced by approximately 50% to make them larger and more robust than previously, which appears to have provided SpaceX with sufficient confidence to eliminate one fin completely. We're aware that removing parts represents Elon Musk's preferred design philosophy. We'll now discover whether they ultimately need to restore it or not. Located above the grid fins is something entirely new for the Super Heavy, an integrated hot stage connection. For every launch since Flight 2, SpaceX has employed a hot stage separation to propel the ship away from the booster. While that's consistently functioned effectively, it always necessitated an adapter position between the two that would shield the booster's fuel tank from the engine flames and permit the exhaust gas to escape laterally. That interstage adapter might appear insignificant, but it weighed approximately 10 metric tons and had to be discarded into the ocean after separation was completed. Consequently, it's not a viable long-term solution. That's the reason the new booster features this triangular pattern of support beams at the top that creates considerably more open space to vent the exhaust gas. Positioned in the center is this new reinforced dome section. That's actually the summit of the methane fuel tank. SpaceX has welded additional layers of steel at strategic locations to protect the tank from engine fire throughout the hot stage. Moving to the Starship itself, the V3 will appear quite similar to the existing design, but internally, it's receiving numerous new upgrades. The current V2 ship is perhaps most recognized for experiencing some reliability challenges. Most of them encountered a rapid unscheduled disassembly of some variety. As far as anyone can determine, each one of those failures succeeded in illuminating a different issue with the overall design. SpaceX has devoted this entire year to identifying problems, resolving them, then discovering new problems, and repeating that cycle repeatedly. Leading up to the previous flight test number 10, which was largely successful, we did observe the ship getting impacted by an explosion in the engine compartment that destroyed two of the rear control flaps before re-entry. Following lessons learned from all of those setbacks, the engineers at Starbase have completely redesigned the fuel delivery system for Starship V3. This rocket is also receiving the upgraded Raptor engine, which should demonstrate significantly greater reliability. With all of that combined, this new Starship Super Heavy will be capable of deploying approximately 100 to 150 tons of payload into low Earth orbit. This will position it comparably with the capability of the historic Saturn V moon rocket from the Apollo program. However, Starship will also be fully reusable, something that would have been deemed impossible during the Apollo era. Addressing That reusability SpaceX provided us with the most comprehensive preview yet of what an orbital docking and fuel transfer will entail. The exterior of the V3 ship will be equipped with new docking adapters on the rear side opposite the heat shield. It appears there will be two varieties of Starship, one with male adapters and one with female, or one designed for sending and one for receiving, whichever perspective you prefer. Following that connection, the two ships will transfer liquid fuel between them which will enable the receiving ship to travel higher into space and reach new destinations. SpaceX has stated that this new Starship V3 is not the final design, but it will be the one that first lands on the Moon and Mars, or attempts to land, at minimum. We'll observe how that unfolds. Supporting all of this will be a new and enhanced Starship launch pad and catch tower, frequently referred to as Stage Zero. Flight 11 will be the final launch from Tower 1 and it will be the last occasion that SpaceX utilizes their inverted showerhead flame diverter. Tower 2 features a more conventional flame trench and water deluge system at its foundation, identical to what you'd observe beneath the Falcon 9. The tower itself will be taller and more robust than before. However, the chopstick arms will actually be considerably shorter than the original Mechazilla. The explanation for that is quite straightforward. Smaller arms can move more rapidly and will be more stable. When SpaceX constructed the first set of arms, they'd never caught a rocket before, so they didn't know how much surface area they would require. It turns out not very much. They're now building more intelligently. This provides us with much to anticipate, which is excellent news. It signifies that the next chapter for Starship will usher in new and exciting times once again. Therefore, stay tuned.